Tigers are the true kings of the jungle, yet unfortunately are going the way of monarchies. Hi, I'm Danielle and you're watching Animal Logic. Now, tiger taxonomy is a bit complicated. For a long time, it was thought that there were around eight tiger subspecies, but a recent study has concluded that there are really only two, Panthera tigris tigris, or the mainland Asian tiger, and Panthera tigris sundaica, or the Sunda island tiger. The study found that there wasn't enough information to prove that the various populations of tigers were different enough to be classified as distinct subspecies, and the label was just used out of convenience. So what we have is two subspecies of tigers that contain several different populations of tigers described by names like Siberian or Amur tiger, Indo-Chinese tiger, Malayan tiger, Bengal tiger, Sumatran tiger, and so on. Tigers are the largest species of cat in the world, and the mainland Asian tiger, which includes the Siberian tiger, are truly king of kings. The males measure up to 3.9 meters long, including their tail. Meaning, if I was lying down, it would take two and a half of me to make up the length of a Siberian tiger. Male mainland Asian tigers are pure bulk, weighing up to 300 kilograms, and are much bigger than the females. The males weighing on average 70% more than their female counterparts. Mainland Asian tigers are much larger than their island-dwelling cousins. The Sumatran tiger, for example, weighs at most 140 kilos, half the weight of a Siberian tiger. This size disparity is partly explained by Bergman's law, which says that animals that live in colder climates tend to grow larger than animals in warmer climates. This is in part due to thermal regulation. The bigger cats are able to retain more heat than smaller ones due to the larger cat's smaller surface to weight ratio, which radiates heat more slowly. In their prime, tigers could be found across Asia, from the Pacific to the Black Sea, but their current range is just 7% of their historic range. In the last decade alone, tiger range has declined by 41% and now they can only be found in small patches. They are endangered, but this isn't the first time they've neared extinction. Around 73,000 years ago, the massive Toba volcanic eruptions almost pushed them over the edge of extinction. The eruptions eliminated several mammal species in Asia, but a small group of tigers survived to repopulate the continent. But due to a population bottleneck, they lost a lot of genetic diversity. Tigers are members of the Panthera genus, and despite their similarities in size to lions, they are actually more closely related to snow leopards and jaguars. Tigers are ambush hunters and primarily eat ungulates like deer and bovine, but will eat anything that they can catch, including fellow predators like sloth bears, snakes, and yes, crocodiles. Unlike many other species of cat, tigers have pretty good endurance, allowing them to chase prey a lot longer than their sprinting cousins. King of the Jungle is a title often associated with lions, which is odd because lions hunt in the plains while tigers rule the jungles. Their territory is made up of dense vegetation, tall grass, and trees, making orange with black stripes the perfect camouflage when stalking prey in a habitat of vertical lines. As their territory shrinks and their prey disappears, tigers need to take every opportunity available to eat. They can go for two weeks without food, and when they do eat, they will consume around a fifth of their body weight. When fresh prey is unavailable, tigers will muscle their way into stealing catches from smaller predators, which is pretty much every other predator. They have huge fangs, the longest of any big cat, measuring a whopping 9 centimeters long, which is a fair bit longer than my index finger. Their preferred method for killing prey is to clamp their powerful jaws around their prey's throat, asphyxiating them. This strategy allows them to kill prey weighing up to one ton, including the water buffalo, a claim almost no other predator can make. Unfortunately, the diet of some tigers is made up of us. Human-eating tigers are a real thing. For the most part, human-eating tigers are older tigers who can't catch other prey, so they go after humans. Which, if the internet trend of bear selfies has taught me anything, are the easiest prey out there. There is an exception to this rule, however. 
And it's the Sundarbans, a vast coastal forest located mostly in the southern reaches of Bangladesh, along its border with India. In this unique habitat along the Ganges Delta, young, healthy tigers prey on humans, killing approximately 50 people every year. In order to combat this, a conservation group called the World Conservation Union started distributing and wearing masks with faces on them on the back of their heads. This, to a tiger, makes it look like you're always watching them, preventing them from being able to sneak up on you. This admittedly hilarious tactic has been incredibly successful and reduced the number of attacks on those wearing the masks to zero. This idea actually comes from nature, and tigers coincidentally use a similar strategy. If you look at the back of a tiger's ears, you'll notice two white spots somewhat resembling eyes, making it look like they're always looking behind them. A lot of other species do this as well. Many butterflies and birds have markings that look like eyes in order to deter predators from attempting to sneak up on them. Unlike lions, tigers are solitary, usually only meeting to mate. Mating can happen year-round, with gestation lasting three to four months. Cubs weigh around one kilo when born, and will feed off of their mother's milk for around six months. Unlike many species of cat, adult tigers will provide a lot of nourishment to their cubs, even letting them eat before they've eaten. That said, occasionally, males will kill the cubs in order to make their mother interested in mating again. When juvenile males are old enough to set out on their own, they initially will set up camp fairly close to their moms. When they're older, they'll move out and find territory unclaimed by other tigers, or they will challenge an older male for their territory. This is the most dangerous point in a tiger's life. Tiger territory is huge, with some males having territory of up to 294 square kilometers. And they mark it with scent, using their urine and anal glands to let other tigers know to stay out. Though female tiger territory is typically much smaller, with some females having territory of around 84 square kilometers. They're excellent swimmers and can swim up to 7 kilometers in a single go, and up to 29 kilometers in a day. Tigers occasionally will mate with lions, but it usually only happens in zoos. If the male is a lion and the female is a tiger, it's called a liger. And if the female is a lion and the male is a tiger, it's called a tigon. Either way, the hybrids are infertile. Ligers are interesting though, because they are huge. They can measure up to 3.5 meters long and weigh up to 450 kilos. This is due to the fact that the male lions have a growth-promoting gene, while female lions don't. So with the absence of the female's genes, the ligers grow a lot. Tigers are beautiful predators. Some Bengal tigers have a recessive gene that makes them white and consequently one of the most gorgeous animals to have ever walked the earth. Due to their popularity with zoo-goers, white tigers, both of whom's parents must be white in order to pass on the gene, have been increasingly inbred in order to create more white tiger cubs, and the results of the inbreeding are beginning to show. Tigers are heavily poached for their fur, as trophies for rich people, and their body parts are used a lot in traditional medicine. There are now less than 3,000 tigers left in the wild. For context, here in Toronto, 30,000 people ride just one of our subway lines per hour. If you spend an hour on that line, you'll likely run into roughly 10 times more people than there are tigers in the wild. But there is at least one tiger who didn't take poaching lying down. In 1997, a poacher by the name of Vladimir Markov shot and wounded an Amur tiger and stole part of its kill. The injured tiger tracked Markov back to his cabin, where it waited between 12 and 48 hours for him to return. While in wait, it destroyed everything in the cabin that had Markov sent on it. When the poacher arrived home, the tiger killed and ate him. While that was a rare occurrence, tigers have a long history of being the most fearsome cats in the world. To learn where they came from and how they won their evolutionary battle with saber-toothed cats, I highly recommend that you watch Age of Big Cats, a Curiosity Stream original documentary series that is streaming right now. Written, directed, and shot by renowned nature documentarian Martin Dorn, this beautiful 4K documentary series intimately captures big cat behaviors like never before. Age of Big Cats tells the story of how modern big cats came to dominate the world over their prehistoric, saber-toothed competitors. 
This series was a huge inspiration for this episode of Animal Logic, and if you want to learn even more about tigers and see some fascinating, never before seen tiger behaviors, I really recommend it. I think you'll love it. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers over 1,800 documentaries and non fiction titles from some of the coolest filmmakers in the world. They also have a bunch of awesome exclusive originals. If you're a fan of Animal Logic, you'll love all the nature documentaries on the service. I know I do. If you want to watch Age of Big Cats and hundreds of other documentaries, go to curiositystream.com slash animallogic and claim your 30-day free trial with the promo code animallogic. So what animals should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching!